Hey everybody, it's Gil here with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, and in this week's video, we're going to show you the proper way to install a boat cleat. It doesn't matter the size of the boat or the size of the cleat, this is the proper way to go ahead and install one. In last week's video, we tried something a little bit new. We actually showed a video of how to make egg drop soup at home. Uh, certainly a departure from our typical videos. Um, be interested to know what you thought of that. If you didn't see that video, I'll put a link to it um, right down in the description. Or if you're on a mobile device, a little pop-up will show up right here and you can check out that video. Now, let's get to the cleat and show you how we do, go about doing this work. This morning I'm going to work on putting a, an additional cleat in the front of the boat here. Uh, we had these new covers made for the boat and unfortunately when it's uh, cleated with the whips that hold the boat out off the dock, um, I end up having to leave a couple of the snaps undone and unfortunately it doesn't pull the whole cover taut and some of the water runs down inside with the cover off, uh, with the cover like that. So I'm going to look at what it's going to take to climb in there and do a little bit of boat aerobics um, where I can drill through and uh, ultimately how to install this cleat. So let's see if we can get that done today. We'll see. I probably have to run and get the cleat, but I want to make sure I get the same one that matches all the others. Um, the first thing I want to do is see if I have access to the place that I ultimately want to install it. That's going to be the interesting part. And I think it's going to start with somehow climbing either into that little opening and laying down underneath the forward bench or seeing if I can get in the front hatch underneath those seats and climb in the other way. We'll see. It'll be fun. Given the size of this opening right here, I think what I'm going to do is take that speaker off and see if there's any chance I can reach it easier that way. It seems like it'd be a heck of a lot easier than working my way down into that thing on my back so I could reach all the way up there, which would be a long reach. It was just a matter of loosening up and removing the four screws that held the speaker in place, pulling the speaker out of its opening. Um, and you'll notice here I was just disconnecting the wires and seeing where they went inside there. Uh, this is nice they're wired up with little tabs in the back just unplug both of those uh, and i'm just kind of taking a look in here to see exactly where the back of that light is because um, that helps orient me to where i want to install the cleat reached up and it's going to work out really well this looks like i can get real good access this way instead of doing boat aerobics the good news is that's absolutely going to work well that's a lot better with that sunshade like that uh, the good news is taking that speaker off helped. I'm going to be able to reach up there. I can reach everywhere I need to get to get a backing plate and um, as well as nuts and washers on it. So I'm going to head up to the store real quick and pick up the size cleat that I ultimately want for that spot. I'll show you what it's for, by the way, in just a second. Now I'm just heading north on Highway 41, uh, just crossed over the Peace River, drops into Charlotte Harbor right by our house. But I'm heading up to a marine store. I'm going to pick up a cleat, the one that's this wide, uh, at my, my exact measurement. Uh, but I wanted to match all the other cleats on the boat where I'm going to hook this whip up to it. Uh, and then the other thing I'm doing is I'm running to buy a new drill. I can't believe it. I, I have so many drills, like, you know, a corded drill. I've got cordless ones, a bunch of them on the boat and in the storage shed in our wood shop. We went all the way back to Louisiana to make sure we brought back the woodworking tools. And I grabbed one of the tool sets of, with the drills in it. It has two, uh, two drills, two batteries. Somehow I forgot the charger for it. It wasn't in the case. and uh. So anyway, uh, rather than going and buying a new charger just for that one, um, which is one of the good ones, I figure I'll just go buy a little cheap cordless set. It'll be enough to get me by today. I, you know, I can use it for the stuff that I don't care so much about as opposed to my good ones, which I treat really well and I don't want to have anything happen to them. But if I'm leaning over the side of this thing in some awkward position and God forbid it falls in the water, I'm not out the same amount of money as I would be if I, I lost one of my really good Milwaukee sets. You know? To the marine store and to Harbor Freight, but I'm going to keep an eye on the road. This little uh, phone holder I have on the dash is pretty handy. <laughs> So here's what I'm trying to do. You can see where that whip is tied right there to the rail. I want to put a cleat right there. That way the cover can go all the way along that snap line. Oh, look, there's my head shadow. I'm making sure that the cleat is up high enough that it won't hit like a pole or something if we get too close to one. So I'm going up high enough on this angled piece here where this piece angles inward so that it, uh, it doesn't rub the side, but low enough that the lines will still kind of go below that light. The only downside would be if I tied to this forward um, at a pretty steep angle, like low to the dock, I potentially could hit that little running light, but I'll just avoid using it for that at any point in time. So now that I've got the spots marked, it's time to drill it. I'll drill a couple of pilot holes to start. 
That was a little nerve-wracking, putting a drill to the side of the boat, but uh, as you can see here, I just held my hand underneath it to catch the big pieces of the, the fiberglass uh, drill bit components here. Uh, <laughs> you'll notice it wasn't easy here. I didn't have my shop vac, so it was kind of working it over the side of that rub rail and into my hand into a little trash can I had. The holes in these cleats call for a quarter inch bolt and you'll notice I started with a pilot hole and that was just to avoid trying to chip out any of the gel coat on the edge here as I started. Uh, so after doing the pilot holes I then went ahead and used the quarter inch drill bit and repeated the process into each of those pilot holes uh, just to go ahead and get the holes to the correct size. Now you can see here I cracked the gel coat right on that very edge there. That'll be all right. Perfect. I like to use Boat Life's life seal for above the water sealant. You see me do this on the other boats as if you've watched our videos of porting um, glass and whatnot as well. Um, but you can see what I've done here. I've just run a small bead around the outer edge of this. And the reason I'm doing that is I want it to skin over a little bit so that when I apply pressure, it sort of uses it like a gasket almost. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the screws into that particular uh, cleat through the openings so that they're kind of held in place as it skins over. And now it's the easiest to call a friend, as they say. So Deb got up top, and um, while I was down inside the boat getting ready to do the backing, she was lining the cleat up and putting the screws down through the holes. Uh, keep in mind, I'm actually reaching into this through the speaker opening, so I can't see what I'm doing up here. But I'm working on threading, um, threading the washers and the nuts in there. You can see I'm just sort of feeling around for where they are. Uh, once I found what, what its location was, um, I realized that these are not going in very far. So I was able to get um, the washer on there and at least get the nut started, but not enough that it's gonna work. I think I'm gonna have to go get longer screws for this thing. Well, as is typical when you do work on a boat, I thought for sure that inch-long bolts would be more than enough to go through the cleat, through the fiberglass, and still give me room to put the uh, the backing plate, the big one-inch wide stainless steel washer, and the lock nut on, along with the nut. It's barely enough to get a few threads of the nut on, and I can't even get the lock washer on. So, uh, while it's skinning up, it won't hurt anything. Good news is the West Marine is only a few miles from us here. I can get that piece, get back real quick, and put those screws in uh, with the proper size on it, which I think will be much, much better. But frustrating, uh, you know, if we were down on Dream Chaser, I would have bags and boxes of all kinds of extra screws that we keep as spares. But on this little power boat, I don't have a darn thing, quite frankly, and that's challenging, but oh well. Oh yeah, hey, like my new shades, they fit right over my glasses. It was like going snow blind, staring at the white uh, fiberglass of the boat there in the sunshine. With the one inch bolt swapped out for inch and a half, I came back to the boat and you'll notice I actually removed the bolts, um, just the three that didn't have the nut on the back and uh, put those in and then just used my hand to put the backing plate. Uh, so these are actually one inch stainless steel washers along with a lock nut. And then I'm using a quarter by 20 nut on the back side of this. Um, Anytime you're installing a cleat, it's very important that you have a backing plate. If all you have was a washer and a nut, any pull or tug on that could actually pull or rip right through the fiberglass. But by putting these one inch um, or larger even uh, stainless steel washers on them, that gives it the strength of the backing plate. Once everything was tight and just finger tight, I went ahead and used this uh, little handy um, wrench I have. It's a little socket set. It's about the size of a three inch diameter, like a hockey puck. And it has different socket holes in each end of it. And it's really handy. You can kind of put it right on the back side of it. And what I'm doing is holding it on the nut and then using a screwdriver over the top side and actually tightening them up. With everything tightened down, it's now just time to reinstall the wires to the back of the speaker. Um, go ahead and tighten the speaker back up in its place. Kind of do it like a car lug nut, alternating around. Yeah, it's all set on there. You can see the cleat is there embedded, and I have the whip connected to it. So if you notice, the front whip is at a bit of an angle right there. What that thing does is, as the water goes up or down, it pulls the boat out away from the dock. So I have spring lines on it right here on the side, and then obviously a bow line as well as a stern line, but the whip on each end 
is what helps hold it away from the dock so it never ends up bouncing against the dock, which is really nice, even in heavy wind or when boats go by. You know that saying, there was no room at the end. Um, that boat area was just completely packed. I actually tried to get in. There was one small spot that was just a little bit longer than the boat. I attempted to go into it. I thought, you know what, I'm not going to chance it. So we ended up going over to the crab house. Had a great lunch. It was a wonderful time. I hope you enjoyed this week's video on the proper way to install a boat cleat. Um, we're trying something a little different. I'd be interested to hear what your thoughts are. You can leave something down in the comments um, below and let us know. But we're trying a video format that's going to be around 10 minutes long per episode as opposed to the 18 or 22 minutes that most episodes are. Hopefully that will allow us to focus on a single topic for each video and you might find that a little bit more useful to browse and just sort of get the information if it's important to you. Thanks, as always, from Gil and Deb aboard the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser or wherever else we happen to be that particular week. Uh, we'll see y'all next week. Safe sailing and fair winds.